Testing, testing. Am I still muted? Yeah, that's the one. Am I still muted? Uh, uh, no, there is no mute. That's the, that's okay. the one you want to turn on. Yeah, that's on. I think it might be the stream one. I had the mic muted. I think it's okay now. Oh, yeah. If you mute yourself with Zoom, you might have muted yourself too. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Thanks, Erica. <laughs> All right, then. Let's uh, get going. So, hello and welcome to the first Bushwhacker Weekly with Georgia and Nick. For those who don't know, we are the active game developers in Bushwhacker 2, Codename, Codename Entertainment's oldest running game. I am reading from a script, so if it seems like I'm reading from a script, it's true. I am. Uh, this is our first stream, so please go easy on us. Um, I'm Nick, your programmer, designer, content creator, and community manager. And with me is Georgia. Georgia, what's up? Hello, everybody. Um, I am the... I guess only art person for Bushwhacker, so I'm also the art overlord of Bushwhacker. Um, so I do all the critters, um, doodads, backgrounds, basically anything that looks pretty in the game. And uh, thank you, Georgia. Behind the scenes, we've got <laughs> Sasha moderating the chat, and we also have all of the stream gurus you've probably seen on the on the other streams we have here, Margaret and Dylan, and Erica's there as well. She just came in to save me. All right, so uh, what's the deal with the stream? Usually we just hop into chat on Fridays. You might see me and occasionally Georgia on Cena Games, previously Facebook and Kong Chat. I don't know we call that Dev Chat, but today, today's different. Today, Dev Chat has gotten an upgrade. Please direct your attention to the coupon code at the top of the screen. Uh, <laughs> I get cut off before I go there. It's live dev chat debut. It will give you a free uh, quester satchel, which we've never done with a coupon before. So I hope you enjoy that. And you can redeem that in chat via the your inventory tab if you've never redeemed a coupon. If you haven't, I'm very excited for you. Uh, so we'll be here for an hour to answer your questions. And whilst doing so, Georgia will be drawing a unique Bushwhacker-related art piece. Why don't you talk about that, Georgia? Right. So today, I am going to be drawing this cute little griffin boy. Uh, he is a pet from last year's Thanksgiving event. Um, so I thought it'd be appropriate given the season and with the event going out this weekend. Um, so this little guy will be turned into a coloring sheet for those who like coloring stuff. <laughs> I love coloring stuff. It's very soothing. I do too. A couple years back, my mom bought me and Missy one of those uh, adult coloring books. Oh, they're very intricate. But, they are. Yeah. They really test your skills. <laughs> they do. I'm not surprised she gave me those and that she's into them because she's the person who plays like thousand piece puzzles for. On the oh, casual. God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I can't wait to see how your art turns out. In the game, it's always been good. Out of oh, game, it's always you. been good. So. <laughs> Should be good. Why, thank you. Um, so while you're getting that started, might as well do some updates on the company and the game. Uh, so there aren't any big updates this week, except for Thanksgiving this weekend. I don't know why I thought there weren't any updates. <laughs> uh, so the Thanksgiving event's going to be rerunning for the oh, sixth or seventh time. I don't think it was in the first year. I have to check the database, which I don't have here. Um, and that aside, we've got... I've been working a little extra on the Trinket Sets feature, which I've been talking about at length. I'm very excited for it, and it's really coming together, and I think it's going to be a real good supplement to the regular game flow, because uh, one of the top 
replies I get in the the forum dev chats and stuff is there's too many trinkets and there's too many there's too many trinkets and a lot of them are really lame and need to be upgraded. This won't solve that, but this will help you uh, utilize more of your trinkets to kind of get different sets going. So uh, the biggest uh, people have said they'd like to use it for say holiday uh, bonuses and odds. So you could equip to set one, all of your holiday bonuses. You could do set two, might be for puzzles. You could optimize for that. Or maybe you're big into the mana gain, so you could set up another one for your mana find. Um, on that note, I'll spoil a little things, a little details about the trinket set system. Uh, we were talking about. I really appreciate everyone who commented in the uh, the forum. I don't, I've been doing. I've only done two, but they've been really good so far. Uh, forum Q and A's with the dev, and also just asking, like making a poll. And then linking to that with an in-game announcement and i see lots of new t uh, first time posters to that so it's really cool having every having new players kind of chime in on that anyway there will be five slots you'll get two after you complete a quest to unlock your first sets and then you can purchase the other other three sets for golden gems like you had with the original uh trinket slots it's probably been so long since some of you have actually had to unlock a slot, given... I think you can get the max one at level... I think shortly after level 100, so... Yeah. Actually, I think before that. Anyway, I hope everyone likes that. I hope to get that out... I hope after Thanksgiving. We usually like to save any exciting updates for after events. Um, and then Georgia, do you know what we're doing next weekend, next Friday? Oh, yes, we are going to be doing Extra Life next Friday. That's right. Very exciting. Super very exciting. It will <laughs> be kind of a, a reduced uh, COVID nineteen friendly edition, so less uh, in the flesh board games and stuff. Board games are unfortunately uh, one of the victims of COVID. Mm -hmm. Everyone sitting across from each other, touching all the pieces and eating food at the same time. It's just a bad recipe. But George, uh, George, no one's named in the office is George. <laughs> David, David Whitaker, who you've seen, he's one of the founders of the company, uh, will be, he's been really putting in the extra time to make sure that the extra life will be as good as possible for this year. Setting up some custom setups and barriers and buying a lot of extra equipment so we have a lot of redundancy and a few people have to share I'm very excited for that um so that's it's mostly it for the updates uh so i think most people tuning in have already migrated but if you're on facebook and congregate still somehow then you need to migrate before December. You can no longer play on those platforms. And if you're on Armor Games, you can still play on Armor Games until the end of this month. After which, you will just get this notification on the game that says, migrate to continue. Uh, so the sooner you migrate, the better. You can kind of get used to the new system. Well, nothing's really different on the Codename Games platform than Armor Games, so just, just hop on over. Uh, doing so will give you access to the desktop launcher, so if we're all kicked at the curb by the browsers at the end of the year. You can still play on this downloadable installer for Bushwhacker 2. Uh, yeah, so that's it for updates. Uh, I'd like to open the floor for questions. Sasha has been adding one question. <laughs> so Kiki BW2, thanks for writing a question. So two sets. Free to buy two more. Uh, yes. Uh, none of them will be uh, for premium currency at all. It's going to be gold and gems. So you will complete a quest. It will unlock your first two. Mostly because if you had one trinket set, it would kind of be redundant and useless. So you get two to start off with. And then you can buy 
three more to f for five total. Thank you for the question. I guess I should have chat open, huh? Probably a good idea. Nice comment from Sin Bari. I got, I got it to work just fine in the game. Got a brittle Lux Sphere from the satchel. Thanks for the gift, guys. Winky face. Um, that's a pretty good find. Help you with your broom crafting. Glad you enjoyed it. I was pretty excited for this coupon because everyone gets a little something different, so it's it's much more share worthy than like, here's another energy pack. Question from Raynar. I hope that's how you pronounce that. First time meeting you two. So my question is, how long have you been with Sini and how much of that time on Bushwhacker? Uh, why don't you start, Georgia? Oh, shoot. I got to do math now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shoot. I started in 2017, May 2017. So I guess it's coming up to be four years next May. I guess. Uh, yeah, coming up. Yeah, and uh, since I started, I've always been on Bushwhacker, though I have worked um, on other games as well. Bushwhacker is my main jam. Yeah, you've dabbled. Uh, I have dabbled. Uh, which of the uh, cute, adorable pets and stuff have you done for, say, Champion? Uh, I've done some familiars. I did the um, Baby Spurt familiar. Um, Snowy Owlbear familiar, the Mindful Sloth familiar, um, is that it? Did you do I've a done some monsters. Yeah, yeah, I've done some monsters. I've done more monsters than familiars. Well, you're sure good at creating monsters. I, I love things. monsters. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, your reputation for cute is what got you <laughs> to do all the, uh, Keep promotional charity pets. It is, which is interesting because most of the time, like my own art, um, I don't usually draw super cute. Um, I usually draw, uh, like I like drawing big muscly characters and stuff like that. So it's always interesting how my reputation here is like for drawing cute things and then elsewhere it'll be drawing like either muscly people or recently sexy people apparently so that's always funny <laughs> you're talking about your uh your uh twitter commission <laughs> yes <laughs> yes <laughs> uh you have put a muscly person in bushwhacker too i have i think it that least. was really funny was it more than just the strong whacker game which is just a, a beefcake of a man <laughs> Um, I mean, I've put in, like, let me get my handy-dandy little list of pets here. There was a doll, too, wasn't there? There was a strongman doll, yes. Yeah. And I've done, like, little strong critters, like the cute little minotaur. He's kind of got some muscle to him. Oh, yeah. Oh, we did the, uh, the, the three training minotaur ones, which was pretty mm -hmm. cool. I had to look up all these different, like, breeds of cow, and there's, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, there is. It's a lot. I just made them have tiny little biceps. <laughs> Cows don't have biceps, anyway. You don't know that, Nick. That's true. Have you ever asked a cow if they have biceps? Well, I'm pretty sure I know the reply I'd get, and I don't know okay, if all right. question. All right. <laughs> Oops. Um, 
Oh, I guess I should answer this question now too. Um, I've been with the company for a weirdly long time. Even before I was uh, given a full-time position, I did three co-ops here. Uh, when I was going to University of Victoria, the company often pulls their co-ops from there. And it's, A, it's a great program. I highly recommend if you're doing post-sec, if you can score some co-op terms, that's the way to get your foot in the door. Uh, and for those co-ops, at least the first one, I was doing Bushwhacker content. I actually made the, if you've been through the, the Desert City, the Jungle, and the Crystal Mines, uh, I did think all of those and then I had crudely laid out some of the castle which was later finished by I think Justin I got a ding what happened George's screen's all zoomed in it is all zoomed Whoa, in oh Nick what have you done oh it's my fault did you adjust it at all here oh did I adjust it? Don't worry. I have the skills. Bless your heart to think that I know how to adjust things. I have a unique set of skills. It's okay, I'll fix it. Oh, it's because you're zooming. Oh no. There's so many things to mute. <laughs> You got it? I got it. You know, I think we tried to crop your screen to just the thing, but then you like zoom in, zoom out, as you should, so. <laughs> Just gonna do the whole thing. Everyone can see the entire art, artly process. size we'll fix this next time it's okay it's fine uh okay back to the question yeah i did a bunch of co-ops here first one was to do those the desert city the jungle and the crystal mines a bit of the castle and then i think the second one i was working on this is a good trivia question uh shards of titan is a I guess that's the trivia answer. I don't have the question for it. But uh, Shards of Titan was a, a game we had worked on back in the day, which uh, I got hired on to do some of the tech for. Uh, specifically, I remember doing a lot of the the desert area for Shards and some of the multiplayer tech. They had these re really cool multiplayer instances where I think up to four players can go in. Anyway, great game. Uh, I don't know if I had a third co-op. I don't know. After that, I just remember working on Crusaders. Uh, a friend and I, uh, who was also a co-op here on a separate term, ended up working together to make, uh, to kind of launch uh, Crusaders of the Lost Idols after Dave and Justin had prototyped it. And that was a lot of fun. And then that game's done very well since. And I got moved over to Bushwhacker 2 uh, full time as I was, I was remote and it was a really good fit because the dev team on this one's a lot smaller than the other one. And yeah. And then I was working with one of our older artists, Corey Harrison on the project. And then that was before 
uh, Georgia was hired, and then it's been us, the dream team, ever since. Mm-hmm. Uh, question from Kiki BW2 again. I have a question. Digger G refill. Only in the high jungle? I'm thinking of moving on to other areas. Uh, if you have Digger G trinkets equipped, you will find Digger G in any field and bushes that you whack in. So, yeah, you can move on and keep collecting it. I hope you liked the quarry stuff. I had a good time putting it together. I just wanted kind of a more... I don't know, I try to add something new in each of the big quest hubs. Uh, something like Big to Chew On and a little system I thought would be refreshing. For those who don't know, the Quarry game is like a... I don't know if there's like a normal game that is a comparison to it, but you kind of... You kind of play a game of hot and cold as you're digging around, so you click and then your character gets an icon above their head, kind of indicating how close they are to the treasure, so you poke around there. <laughs> Anyway, I had a lot of fun doing that. Kiki BW2 says, Thanks, Nick. Five sets. Wow. So happy to not have to switch trinkets. Me too. I'm hoping to add... Well, you've already seen... Well, I guess you haven't. Later on in the salt desert, I tried to play more with some bushes that give you more things if you whack them with a specific type of uh, energy. So if you quick, there's a energy bushes where you can normal or quick whack them and they give you more stuff. There's power bushes where if you power, power whack them, you get more stuff. And then there's mana bushes for mana whack. I thought they were a neat way to try to get players to think about different loadouts for trinkets because you collect so many trinkets in this game i think more systems that get you to try to engage with that system is to engage with those items is better that's also why i did the strong rocker game at all which we were talking about earlier is so uh, it literally requires you to have a certain level of max power and to fill it so uh, a lot of players wouldn't have that set immediately so they'd have to kind of go rummage through their trinkets to get that kind of stuff. And with the trinket sets, you could then, if you wanted to, reserve one of them for like your, your power wax or something. That was cool. Anyway, yeah, I can't wait to get that feature out and I hope you really do like it. Georgia, this one's for you by Kiki BW2. The Polaris Griffiths is amazing, Georgia. Oh, thank you. That's actually one of the older pets I've done. I think probably my first year. Was that 2016? 2017, I 2017. think. Yeah. Right. An oldie but a goodie. I started on Bushwhacker 2 in 2016, and then you joined in 2017. Yeah. Yeah, you did a great job with the Flores Griffiths. I, I forget oh. exactly what requirements I gave you other than steampunk whatever you want. I think that's what it was, yeah, yeah. just, like, you're just like, something steampunk, I guess, I'm like, okay. Yeah, because we were trying to tie it into the existing lockbox graphic, which was yeah. the item you collect in the first of the uh, Explorers League epic quest chain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought uh, Griffin would be cool, because um, you know me, I like my mythological critters they're always interesting and fun to draw yeah i feel like 2019 was just the the season the year of mythical creatures getting into the game <laughs> they're just so interesting and i like drawing them well, and when you've been working on a game for so long this game is over eight years old uh-huh a lot of the more uh i don't know i guess like the, when you think of pets there's like a a handful of ones that come to mind I'm like okay we got some dogs some cats and with some wild animals we got some bears some tigers mm -hmm. and then six years later you've <laughs> already done all those things so yeah. <laughs> i always get um excited when players do um either look up the obscure mythological beast and they're like oh i learned something cool about like 
this mythical creature because I never heard of it before, so so I decided to look it up. Or I recognize that creature. Like that's actually interesting that you put it in there. Mm -hmm. That always makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, you get a lot of comments uh, usually in the chats. Aww. Even if you're not there, people always compliment the the new set of pets. Because we got such a nice player. We do have a very friendly community. It's one of the greatest pleasures of working on this game. Thank you. Mm hmm. I have to say, I've learned a lot about different mythologies because uh, usually when we do, I let Georgia have free reign on uh, most of the event pets. Well, all the pets, basically. I don't think I've given you a, a formal request in a while. No, I don't think so. Yeah, and then you'll go pick some obscure, like, Irish mythology and I've never heard it before, and then I go down the wiki rabbit hole because <laughs> I've got a... Georgia usually draws it, uh, labels it as, like, I don't know, like, the Halloween event, blah, blah, blah creature, and then I'll have to name and describe it at a, a flavorful description, which has been kind of a tradition of the game, is just to have a somewhat humorous descriptions, so... Sometimes I'll just go pretty deep into the wikis just to figure out what's going on. It's... Mythology is very interesting. It is. And creepy and scary sometimes. <laughs> and just gross sometimes. It's all yeah, over the place. It, it's, it really is all over the place. Like, sometimes, like, I'm like, that's really cool how they either came up with that. Like, I don't know what they were smoking when they came up with some stuff. But <laughs> it's always interesting to see, like, different types of creatures and, like, given the challenge to make it work in the Bushwhacker 2 world, or make it cute, or whatever. Yeah. It's neat seeing, especially weird and creepy creatures, seeing how you'll uh, bushwhackify them. Yeah. Because <laughs> you've done some pretty spooky things. Pretty yeah. Spooky things in here. I think that's really like, interesting. Yeah, like, one of my favorite... Um, mythological creatures is like a wendigo and they're usually very very creepy so I'm like hmm how am I gonna how am I gonna make it super cute yeah, that was the uh you gave it like bone hands and a horse skull face or something yeah so like it was like so um, spooky. a deer skulled creature usually in mythology they're like really emaciated and like lanky and very gaunt and creepy. And I'm like, now I gotta make him really cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a real skill to be able to do that, I think. Oh, thank you. And we've had some... I don't know, there's some pretty gnarly creatures in Bushwhacker. I keep thinking of that... There's like a, a red hairy spider that's... Oh, yeah. The, the Mushroom <laughs> Forest update that's... It's truly haunting. <laughs> It's, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not the cutest spider in the game. <laughs> that whole zone's pretty spooky, won't lie. I think what makes it spooky is how glisteny it is and everything. It is really shiny, You're right. It really is shiny. I think that's, it's, it's weirdly, there's also the, like, the red blood spider. Oh, yes. It's very shiny, but that one's, I think, far cuter than game yeah. the hairy ones. Yeah, it's, it's got the little individual hairs, I think, that make it creepier. Yeah. Uh, KDBW says, the ghost horse reminds me of Icarus. Oh. Oh, and they also commented on the Polaris' leg chain. Oh, yes, like when it sits down and stuff. Yeah, and I think you, uh, we gave it, like, bracelets or something. Oh, chain. I thought you said change. Oh, no, chain. <laughs> C-H-A-I-N. Yeah, that one's quite detailed. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite pet, Georgia? Mine? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I know, you've done over 500... Oh. How many I've have done, you done? Uh, okay, so there's uh let's see here, there's seven hundred and fourteen um in here, I think. 
And if I scroll back to, I've done over half of those. So I've done about over 300. Matt at least. Checks out. Yeah. That's a lot. It is a lot. Let's see how many mounts. You've definitely done over half the mounts. Maybe like, yeah, oh, yeah. Maybe like three quarters. Oh shoot, you're right. Let me see. We didn't have oh, to do before you started. No, oh my god, I've done like over three quarters. All right, asking for your favorite out of a pool of like 600 things is a little, a little difficult. I could, I, yeah, I could probably <laughs> mention a few of my favorites at least. Here, yeah, what's let's... your top three? Top three? Okay, that's still hard out of like 300. Top five? Yeah, top five is better. Here, let's see. Um, I really do like the baby wear pyre pet. Um. That one's probably one of my favorites. Uh, originally from 2018, I believe. Yeah. I think Maybe? So. Yeah. Oh. Or 2017. Oh, God. Did you do it the same year you did the Werepire Mount? No. Okay, yeah. Then the Werepire Mount was last year. So yeah. Yeah, I think I did it previous to that. Yes, 2018. Um, yeah, he's, he's one of my favorites, uh, just because I, I love werepires, and I had a lot of fun with this, like, scratching animation, just yeah, to add a bit more scratching. flavor. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it just, I like adding, like, little flavor when I can, when I have time. To all you players who said that the werepire had fleas, <laughs> dogs can scratch and not have fleas, it's fine. I, I scratch <laughs> and I don't have fleas. Um... Another one of my favorites is uh, a more recent pet uh, from the Dog Days event this year. Um, I really, really liked the Baby Cerberus pet. Mm -hmm. Again, Cerberus is one of my favorite mythological critters. Um, Was that the set we did with the uh, Anubark? Yes. Nice. Actually, I liked all three of those a lot. That was a good set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. What was the third one? Uh, there was the Pixie Pup. Oh, yeah, the Pixie Pup. Yeah, right, I like so. that one, too. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, let's see here, some other favorites. The Rainbow Cockatoo was pretty cool from the Summer Carnival event. Oh, yeah. I wish I had the editor open so I could just <laughs> peruse. Yeah, I wish I could show which ones I'm looking at. Um, oh, I also liked the set from Patriots this year. I had a lot of fun with those, too. The, uh, the Jackalope, uh, the little baby Mothman. <laughs> the and... Mothman was surprisingly <laughs> cute. And the very obscure Ozark Howler pet was pretty cool. Mm. Spooky. Very spooky. Uh, let's see here. Should Some we more? divulge our secret to the, the pet sets? The pet sets? I really just mean like we do a spooky one, a cute one. Oh! <laughs> yes, you, I mean, I've kind of broken that tradition a little <gasps> bit. I'm sorry! <laughs> That's law. Because most of them have ended up like all pretty cute, but all equally interesting and all equally spooky. You fused them. I have fused them. Incredible. Into one. Um... Oh, uh, I know there are some people that have, like, a fear of spiders, but I really like drawing cute spiders. So another one of my favorites was the um, tulip spider from Spring Garden. Um, oh, yeah. Was it one of the, like, peacock spiders? That... Yeah, it was, like, it was, like... Oh, the uh, flower one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the flower one with the little dew drops on it. Yeah. That one was good. Yeah, and I like the flower fawn as well and the mandrake. That was another good set I liked. I think it'd be great if you did a peacock spider that, like, for its idle animation, did the, like, weird dance. Oh, thing. like the little dance? <laughs> oh my god, that would be so much fun. Uh, question from Raynar. Thank you. Uh, are either of you back in the office now, and how difficult did the work-from-home situation make things? 
so neither of us are back in the office. Uh, we're one of the smaller teams, so we haven't really had that kind of uh, production pressure. Uh, and I, I'm, I quite like work from home, I won't lie. I think mm -hmm. I'd really like to do three days from home, two in the office in, uh, in the post COVID realm. But uh, yeah, it's, it was the biggest thing for us, for the, for Codename uh, with the, the bigger development teams having to talk and debug and stuff. A lot of that's, I don't know, there's a lot of like ambient communication that we kind of lost when we did that. But for the Bushwhacker team, it's just Georgia and I, so I kind of do my, my dev thing, Georgia does the art thing, and then we meet in the middle on occasion to hook it all up. Mm -hmm. What about you, Georgia? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I have been doing fine working from home because uh, my sister also works from home, so I haven't been incredibly lonely. Um, I've always had somebody in the house, which has been nice. Um, also, uh, not having to do the very long commute has been nice. You have the biggest commute, possibly, yeah. in the entire office. It's true. Like, yeah, like sometimes it would take, I think the longest it ever took me to get into work was an hour and a half. Um, that was a bad traffic, right? Yeah, we, we get stuck in the crawl in the morning. Um, we have a, a traffic... Uh, anomaly here called the Callwood Crawl. Yes, it's like you're literally crawling to your destination. It takes so long. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like sitting in traffic in the morning, and it's not even like you're driving and looking at scenery or anything. It's just you're idle in traffic. So it's like, uh, um, and that would take like an hour to an hour and a half. And then on the way home, uh, it takes the same amount of time. Sometimes, like, if weather was bad or, like, if there was an accident, it could take up to, like, two hours. And I'm, like, I'm just sitting in a car for over two hours a day. And then when you add that up, it's, like, ten hours a week. It adds up real quick. Yeah, and I'm, like, Ugh. So that has been really nice, being able to sleep in and not having to drive into the office has been probably the best part. The days also, you just roll out of bed and into your chair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I literally do that sometimes. I'm like, oh man, I'm so tired. You're um, just wearing your like really cozy pajamas. Oh yeah, that's that's also nice. I'm like, <laughs> I don't have to wear tight jeans today. That's nice. Um, I also really like um, like like I would forget to take breaks when I was in the office. Sometimes I wouldn't get out of my chair for like hours at a time. Because I'd be so focused, and I'm like, "Oh shoot, what time is it? Like, when was uh, when was the last time I took a break?" It's um, yeah, I think that's a hallmark of a of a good job that you can have those big like you're in the flow at that point. You're just yeah, so focused, but yeah, it's hard to balance that and stretching. Yeah, so when I've been at home, I've been reminding myself to take more breaks, and it has helped. Um, my body quite a bit. Um, I'm still, I'm still like experiencing the pain in my arms, which I'm gonna get looked at, um, on top of like other pain I'm dealing with recently. But um, stretch, I've been stretching more, um, and like I said, taking more breaks, which has helped. Mm -hmm. So I have appreciated that more. It's been easier to do that at home. I totally agree with that. Also, I hope it's nothing serious with your arm. It's kind of spooky. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it is. I think it's just preemptive like measures. Like I remember, um, I think it was maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago. I was experiencing uh, pains in my arms and dizzy spells, um, and I think that's just from like I was being conscientious of my arms or like looking after my body, essentially, like, not getting up and stretching. Um, I was straining my eyes constantly. And that's all on me. Like, I was I was stubborn with, like, stretching and taking breaks and stuff like that. And so I was originally going to go for, like, massage therapy. 
And that never happened because I'm like, I don't need massage therapy. Blah, blah, blah. And so now I'm like, yeah, I probably should have gone and done that. So now I'm kind of paying the price with the, just some pain shooting up my arms. It hasn't been excruciating, though. It's just been a little sketchy. Um, but I got a referral from my doctor. Um, so I'm just waiting to book an appointment with the physiotherapist because I think they're pretty booked up. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think I might, um, I was talking to my doctor about investing in some arm braces I can wear just like when I'm not doing work, hmm. just so they can like help with my arms and like relieve the tension and stuff. Well, I'm glad you're looking into it. Please take care of yourself. Sounds like you are. I know, I know I'm stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like work from home has been a, a somewhat eye-opening experience for that, I guess. Yes, it has. Like, uh, my setup I have right now isn't the most ideal yet. Um, with the way I have my keyboard set up, I need to get, like, a little under desk thing. Um, but I have been, like, getting up and stretching, walking around, doing some arm stretches, stretching out my hands, um, just to keep on top of it. And so far, my arms haven't gotten any worse. Um, the pain will come back every now and then, but that's usually if I've worked a lot a long time or have worked really hard or mm. forgot to take breaks yeah um so it hasn't gotten any worse thankfully That's um good. so i'm trying to stay positive with it mm. and uh my doctor was pretty like yeah that sounds pretty common with what you do and how many hours a day you do art like oh, that it's an art thing it is an art thing as uh i think i calculated it with the other stuff I'm doing on Twitter, plus the stuff I do at work, I draw, I think, around 11 or more hours a day. That's a lot. It is. Yeah, so, I guess with all your personal works, yeah. It's just, yes. It stacks up there. It does stack up. So um, when I calculated that all up, I'm like, oh, dang, I am working a lot. <laughs> like, so um, I've just been pacing myself a bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've gotten into a system that works and the pain hasn't gotten any worse. So I'm on the right track. Good. Yeah. I've also found, I don't know if it's like not under office scrutiny, but like sometimes I'll just take a break when I feel really cramped up and do jumping jacks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just crank out like 50 jumping jacks and then get back to work. Not gonna lie, I kind of want you to do that when we're back in the office. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's really loud and takes up a lot of space. I know, but that's, that's what's funny about it. <laughs> well, we'll see when we get there. Yeah, when we get there. Dun, dun, dun. There was talk of, there was some vaccine talk, I think, shared on the, on the work feed. We've got a, a channel at work that talks about the status of COVID pandemic anyway like mid next year yeah I, i'm i think we were aiming maybe june july maybe i think for like a prototypical thing it, i'm sure other people know more um, yeah like as a uh, a goal in sight i guess but it all depends on like since we've had like other breakouts from people um, being silly and not taking precautions, like doing parties and stuff. Yeah, it's a kind way to put it, being silly. Yes, being silly. <laughs> um, so we got five minutes left. Uh, some activity in chat. I just want to share. Uh, Sean says that we were talking about how many pets and mouse there are. So that's mm -hmm. almost as many Pokemon. Oh my goodness, he's right. <laughs> I gotta beat Pokemon, dang That's it! That's the new goal, we gotta beat Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. What is Pokemon at? Pokemon's got 800 and something, I think. Almost 900, it looks like. Oh. As of Generation 8. <sighs> Tall order. If we add the pets and mounts together, though, pff, done. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, 
Midwest Midnight said, uh, at Georgia, front foot on left side only has two toes. I have no idea why that is bothering me. Oh, it might just be the angle. Yeah, we typically do that angle, don't we, for our, like, tilted top down? Like, one of the feet's at, uh, it's like a profile, and then the other one's, like, that way. Yeah, like, here it's just the angle, but I could add... A little hint of a, hint of a foot. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, he is adorable. Smiley face. Thank you. KTPW loved that the, uh, vampires had fleas. <laughs> I'm telling you, no fleas. Maybe on some of them. I don't know. Depends yeah, maybe how well some you keep... have fleas. Uh, Cini J, Mothman. How have I never heard of this before? Yeah, there's a little Mothman. Uh, okay, this will probably be the last question from. KW Yang 79. Hi Nick, hi Georgia. I know there are plans to add an extra floor space to the island cottage, but is it possible to add an extra space to the ranch as well? As in, as the staircase has taken up some space. Decorating the ranch is a lot of fun. Thank you. So do you want your ranch house to be bigger? So currently you start off with uh, a flat wild piece of property and then you uh, purchase plots of land clear them then you can buy oh, I think you actually start with the smallest house you can upgrade it once to just be bigger and then upgrade it again to have a second floor with the stairwell yes the stairwell does take up some space but you get that whole top floor uh, we are planning on having an extra floor to the Lake Island cottage also there's I've been meaning to implement, there's already assets for the cottage with different paint colors on the outside. I think that'd be fun, we'll let you pick from those. I think at this point we're not looking to add more area to the main ranch for you to decorate just because some people really load it up with ranch items and it just drops the frame rate, the performance really dips. So we've been trying, like with the Lake Island, to just give you separate areas to start decorating with the same huge array of ranch items you have at your disposal. I'm glad you find decorating the ranch is fun. I remember I spent like a good chunk of a day decorating my ranch one time and I'm like, oh shoot, I gotta get back to work. <laughs> oh shoot. It's, it's a lot of fun. I find that when I am like, sometime for debugging, I'll have to load up someone's ranch and stuff and I'll, you know, just casually take a walk around. <laughs> Taking the site. <laughs> there are some very well decorated ranches. There is. Some people put a crazy amount of time in decorating their ranch, and I respect that. On the decoration note, uh, I have already polled the office for Haunted Mansion winners. Uh, so there will be, there's only one platform this year, but we've increased the number of community choice. Uh, so there will be four community choice, one for basically like c and &E, Facebook, Kong, and Armor. Each get their own community one. Uh, so look forward to those later this week. Uh, we don't have a date for the Gen Pets. Uh, you were going to talk about what you were going to make. We're, we're out of <gasps> time. Right. We'll have to save that for next week. Yeah, that'll be next week's topic. Yeah. But they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Oh, yeah, we were going to talk about course. the new area, too. Whoa! Tune in next time. <laughs> <laughs> next time on Bushwhacker Chat. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Uh, I think we should wrap it up. I have scripted a loose outro. Last question. All right. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you all for tuning in. It was our pleasure to hear from you. Uh, Georgia, where can they find the drawing sheet of this cute little griffin boy you've drawn? I think we were going to put it up on the c &E website, the media area of the website. Was that it? 
Yeah, so on the website, there's a Bushwhacker media page. Uh, it'll be very, it'll be the exact same spot as Crusaders, but for Bushwhacker, same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll broadcast that on social once it's ready, and you can download it as a P PDF, I think, or PNG. Probably a PNG. And then print it off, and then you can start coloring it. And we'd love to see some submissions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I loved how the cute little Griffin boy turned out. Well, thank you. It was. I felt a little rushed because I was nervous. It's my first stream and all, but. It was um, great. We'll be doing like other fun pets and critters um, from different events and different years that y'all can color and enjoy and stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll put a book together. Oh, Bushwhacker book. The, the baby. <laughs> All right. I'd like to thank Sasha for moderating the chat. Thank you. Uh, Dylan did a lot of setup for the stream. Thank you very much. And thank you, Georgia, for joining, obviously. And to the Champions and Crusaders stream for inspiring us to join this fantastic Twitch channel. Also, Eric for pushing us to make it happen. <laughs> All right, in the Bonnie salute, be kind, be safe, and we'll talk to you later. Have a great weekend. Oh, Bye, guys. Rest of your week. This is a Tuesday, not Friday. <laughs> okay, see ya. <laughs>